I know all of you, but other people don't know you, so please say nice things about yourself. Go! Okay, after the bio part, is it? Uh, okay, hi, uh, my name is Sarah. I'm from Microsoft. Um, I, cover, I do developer relations for Asia Pacific. Yeah. And I've only done DevRel for one year. So before that, I've never touched any coding stuff before. So very new to coding, developers, programming, very new to conferences. Speaking for the first time last year in December only. So only one month. Okay. Um, yeah, hello, uh, I'm Shin Hui. I am a data engineer at the uh, ST Engineering Data Analytics Strategic Technology Center. So in, uh, I was at the I was at the Global I was CFT day last year where he wrote my profile. Thanks, uh, thanks yeah. for the for the uh, yeah, okay. So so I, I started going to conferences around like two years like two years ago. And then I thought, oh, all the speakers are very, like, oh, are very professional, eh? wow, very good. Eh? But then, but then like, and then I find that, and then I start thinking, like, how do I be just like that? So, and then like, by the time, like, you know, when you go also those, th those tech events and stuff, and then you hear a lot of so like, just, and like, it's just like that, like, you know, very easy, and then I don't understand anything. And then I thought like, oh, I have to be that level to be able to speak at a conference or like that. And plus, it didn't help that when I went for some events, right, when it's a female speaker, she gets a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of, like, this, like, discriminatory shit. Like, script. Script. Yeah. we will continue this particular <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sure. Right. So, anyway, yeah. yeah, so... So, you hold first, hold first. Okay, uh, okay so, <laughs> like, how I got this... Don't review everything. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So, okay, so I spoke, so I spoke at my conference, my first conference in August. So that was in Singapore. And then after that, I spoke at my first international conference, which is actually my second time speaking, in December. Yeah. yeah. yeah thank you. I appreciate that encouragement. Moving on. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Wei. I am a web developer at Shopee. Okay, done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question. No, I, appreciate, I appreciate conciseness. Uh, so the, I guess the first question uh, is, what prompted you to start speaking? Considering that like, like, you, know, it's not, you haven't done it before. Uh, literally GDCFP day. So uh, we weren't part of GDCFP day last year, so Microsoft wasn't, because um, this team didn't exist. But my team in New York was doing it. And then uh, my teammate actually tagged me and said like, you must submit something. <laughs> that I must submit. So I was like, oh crap, okay. And then I looked around like, because if you don't code, like, there's limited things you can submit for, right? So there was only DevRelCon that I could submit for, which I did. And just so happened to be international. And yeah, that's how I started. But also I think, like, I think I met you very early on, like last year when I first started. So I just like anyhow ping people and just started meeting people. And then after that, uh, Hui Jing said like, something about how international conferences don't have enough Southeast Asian representation, which is super true. Um, and also I was getting very aware of the fact that my accent was changing to fit my team. Which <laughs> <laughs> is based in the US. And I was like, wait, hold on, like actually, and then I got this whole identity crisis thing. And I was like, honestly, like the way we speak shouldn't be something that we then change to fit the rest of, um, or like the US side only, because then they don't realize they, that they have an accent as well. Um, but then the whole rest of the world does. So I was like, let's just appear more at these conferences. Yeah, so that really drove me to like increase representation. Just to add on to that, uh, DevRelCon, my a lot of my colleagues uh, showed up. This is on the record, so this will be fun. Um, <laughs> we are trying to hire, and they were like, can 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 you get her? I'm like, no, she works for Microsoft. But yeah, Aww. so she was she was amazing. Uh, so just le letting you know. Um, and you're right, you, you, the, you touched on a very interesting topic about the accent, so we, we will talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. later. Yourself. Oh, okay. So, I, after, I start, after I joined my role I, as a data engineer, and then I thought, and then like, when I first met her at one of the tech speaking panels, I think that was about, <laughs> like, I think I was about like three, four, like three, four months into my work, and then I thought, like, okay, like, now that I I go for all those conferences and I learn all those things, how am I going? How do I start giving a meetup talk? So actually, my my goal was to give a meetup talk first. But then like, but then like, okay, I like. So when then she talked about like global diversity CFP, they were like, oh okay, I take note of that, and then 
Well, uh, I sort of woke up late, but then I realized that I could make it for the event. So I just decided to just join last minute for the event. And then, okay. So like, at first it was really thought like about wanting to speak at a meetup for a start. But then when, when then, when, when then when the goal was like to speak at a conference, I was like, whoa, like I only have like how many months of experience as a data engineer? How do I speak about, how do I have a topic to speak about? So she has all those questions like, okay, uh, yeah, uh, I can answer some questions, but is it enough? And then when you talk about the speaker profile those things. But then like after that, right, it's like when you have someone who, who shares you a goal to try and speak at a conference, right, then you, then you think that, and you start thinking that, okay, should I try to stretch myself and like, you know, just try to submit for conference and stuff like that. So it's not, so that actually planted the seed inside, like such that when I, when I actually encounter, when my, when my team actually encounters such a work problem, then I thought, hey, maybe that might be an idea. And then like, you know, if you have already put in so much effort to solve a problem, and you find out that it's not just you who face the problem, then why not like share about it and maybe like someone in the audience will benefit from it. So that was actually why I started submitting to a conference and it got accepted. So I had the chance to share my experience and it turned out that there are a lot of people out there who also share the same problems and they also like to see how to like solve the issue. Yeah. Um, so both of you mentioned about global diversity CFP day. I was also there last year. That's actually where I think me and Hui Jin met. So yeah, but before that, um, how I actually started was I started um, organizing a an internal sharing um, <coughs> inside my company called like We Are Knowledgeable which is now a meetup, and you will see stickers over there. Um, <coughs> but um, <coughs> when we just started, like, we, we, we were running it on a, on a proposal basis. It's like we shift away from um, doing the, doing the uh, lucky draw, if you find yourself lucky being chosen. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so after we shift over, we, were, we had like a lot of concerns, like would people really propose to speak there and <coughs> should we run it like every other week or like should we really keep the pace, like making it happen every week? And then, um, and also we're Asians, we don't like to speak and we got intruder syndrome and we don't feel like <coughs> feeling expertise to, to, to speak. So, so, so every once in a while, people collectively don't want to speak at RK. So that's how like I got started myself because I need to fill the podium back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I look at my 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 personal website. Like uh, in the past year, I gave thirteen talks on on RK wow. internally. So, so, so that's how how I got started. But if we take a step back and like see how uh, how I pick the topics for my for my talks uh, internally or later on at the meetup or at conferences is the <coughs> it's a feeling that I find something so interesting that um, more people need to know about right? so yeah so that's probably what's um, inspiring them uh, inspiring myself the most yeah, and, and so I think this takes back to something that we've been uh, emphasizing since the start of today is speak about something that means something to you. It does. It really does come across. Um, so I guess that's that's the good good for the introduction. Um, so one of the questions is uh, I've I've thought about is that if if you had attended conferences before as an attendee. Uh, how differently do you like to be a speaker versus being an attendee? Uh, I can say this you know, in a capacity that I think from my personal experience is because I am a very cheap Asian person and I have, <laughs> never, I, I have never attended a conference as an attendee. I have done like, I, I've got, I can carry heavy objects then I go and be a volunteer. <laughs> so that's not really attendee. Uh, then I've also done the I'll just I'll, I'll just be a speaker, that kind of thing. So so I'm curious to know like 
how do like as a if you actually legit like be a, be a normal human being and attend a conference like an attendee, how different do you feel like to be a speaker on stage? Do you, or do you feel different or it's just the same? Okay. Can we stop the order? Can we have a restart? I can take it. Okay, so, um, so for me, the biggest difference is probably the fact that people will speak to you instead of you speak to other people. Because people will see your talk and they find some resemblance or maybe they got questions they want to ask you. So it's like introverts guide to network and <laughs> kind of thing. Because I'm very introverted, I, I, I normally don't start a conversation and that is a big difference for myself, So, so which also makes me, like if I go to a meetup and if I'm giving a talk, I'll, I'll make sure that I am delightful to talk to. Um, <coughs> yeah. So, um, and another thing is when you, when you are about to give a talk, you feel very nervous. So you pay less attention to what's happening in the conference. Mm -hmm. So for myself, like my talk was on the second day, and I nearly missed all the content on the first day. I, I might be sitting there, but my mind is somewhere else. So, so I had to like uh, rewatch the videos um, if I, I I want to learn about the things that the others because I'm speaking about. Similar, similar. <laughs> Similar but slightly different. Like the part about whether people will actually go up to speak to you as a speaker, right? It's actually quite, I, I have a dif slightly different experience. Because I gave, like, from, for one of the conferences where I, sp I spoke at, yes, there are people who actually will come and like, talk to you to discuss more. But sometimes people just may be very shy and they don't really approach you, even though you're the speaker. Or maybe, like, I'm not too sure, but that's my experience. Uh. So, like, it is not a guarantee that being a speaker will get people to talk to you. <laughs> because, like, you know, sometimes people just don't want to talk to you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, or maybe they're they just very shy. Like, you know, shy Asians don't want to talk to the speaker. Think that the speaker will eat them. Oh, by the way, we don't. We are human beings. Yeah. So, but. What's different about speaking on stage, right, versus being in the audience is that when you're in the audience, right, you just like you like you are just there to like learn and stuff like that. And then but then as a speaker, right, you're not just there to try to learn from other speakers. But at the same time you also have to make sure that hey, you're doing a good job right? because hey, people people trust you to go on stage and speak. Like for let's say thirty to forty minutes. So you have to make use of the 30 to 40 minutes and you have to make sure that you get a good impression, get people to stay there. And, as, and then like and then before that, there's a lot of speaker prep and stuff. So like although I don't really write a script because I find that like if I write a script, it will not it will actually cause me to be a bit more robotic. Uh. So what I actually do is that you know, I have to plan like the flow and stuff. Like there's a lot more attention I have to pay like towards giving a good talk. So like when for one of my talks, right? Like it was a two day conference. So on the first day, like when was, on the first day we have like one half which is the talks and then another half which is like, like the like going out for the tour and stuff. But then like because my talk was on the second day and then I was still trying to fix my demo and stuff because like, so because like I mean, like, demos may work on your in your home country and in your home, <laughs> but then sometimes it may not work at the venue. So you have to try to find a way to make it work at the venue. <laughs> yeah. So like that actually and that actually caused me to be un unable to like, focus as much on the content of the talks of the other speakers. I uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like after that, like I mean like. If people talk to you, that's that means you don't need to do the hard work of talking to people. La. <laughs> <laughs> it's plus, good. Plus two for introverted people who don't know how to like uh, conference very stressful. Be a speaker. <laughs> yeah. Sarah. Uh, so definitely, I think try not to be on day two of a conference. <laughs> that's just like every takeaway, right? I was also on day two of a conference, and to be honest, like uh, experienced exactly the same thing. My brain was blanking. I actually 
got so stressed out after the day one seeing all the good talks that I went back and spent like the whole night overnight just trying to fix my talk. And I like, yeah. like the talk that I went in with like in one month prep was just thrown out the window and became a whole different talk. <laughs> so, like, yeah. you know, um, so I mean that was that. But I think like um, building on what they already said, um, one of the different things that I felt was <clears throat> when you're an attendee, uh, I think when you're a speaker, you have more responsibility to also go and interact with the audience around you. Because honestly, it is, yes, I'm, I'm, envy, I'm more of an ambivert, so sometimes I also need downtime, but it's actually easier to be an attendee, uh, it's actually easier to be a speaker because they put you like, in speaker dinner. So before you go into a conference, right, you go into a conference one person alone, you just thrown into the field of people. But before that, there's actually a speaker's dinner usually, and then you meet a lot of people. So when you go into the crowd, you don't feel alone. Um, then also there's um, always a speaker's room where people can go and rest and then downtime then you can talk to each other and there's a smaller crowd. Mm -hmm. So actually I think it's more stressful to be an attendee. Um, but then as a speaker, then I kept having to remind myself that uh, I can't be an ass about it because I, if I'm a speaker, I already got the opportunity. I cannot go and blank out and then don't attend people's sessions, which is even worse because I'm not actually supporting the conference. On top of that, like even though I do know that speakers, I also got to make sure I spend some time to like go into the crowd and also talk to people who are attendees that, because I keep thinking like, when I was an attendee, if the speakers don't talk to me and just walk past me and talk to other speakers, then I always feel like, oh my god, this is like a different breed of people. <laughs> 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 like, I'm the plebeian, then like, I just, I just myself. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, in order for people to also gain the confidence to be a speaker, so might as well you try to be more relatable, then you just go and talk to people also. So I think that was the learning that I had as a speaker. So, so when you double that, then at the end of the conference, you're really damn tired. But, but I think it's more worth it. And so I think when y'all also become speakers next time, that's something to think about. Yeah. yeah, very this very very valuable and good advice sharing. Thanks, thanks everybody. So like going back to Chin Hui's point, like a lot of preparation. Uh, and and the, I think I believe everyone will have a different way of delivering talks. My my like personally, I have a the way I prepare for my talk is I think a bit more rare than most people. Uh, so I was wondering if you all could share. Just to just to prove a point that everybody does it differently. So, like, what? How do you like as brief as you can, like, Because I know this will oh, take a bit okay. long. How do you prepare and and deliver? Like, what? What is your strategy for on stage? Or so yes, on the on stage, like, The on stage. The on stage, uh. yeah. Um. Okay. So I think as Singaporeans, whatever speed you speak at, normally you you cut one third and then you speak at that speed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like half is not enough, which is what I found out. Um, and okay, I do speak generally quite fast as well, but you, you really got to slow it down a lot. Um, I think having your talk in mind, I don't actually have a script, because if I have a script, I will blank out and I won't interact with the audience. So I usually have a half-formed thought and I have like bullet points in my brain, and then I just try to um, wing it on the spot, because then I can react to things that are happening in the crowd. Like, yeah, because like, no, so for example, like when I was at Devrel Con, like, um, my clicker didn't work. Actually, Alicia passed me a clicker, la, but I, like, like spoiled <laughs> in my hands. Um, so I freaked out, right? And I didn't freak out as badly because I knew the I only have big, three big points that I want to cover. So I know that I have time to mess up and I have time to react to make a joke out of it. And I can better talk to the crowd and still walk around the stage and own the space, which makes a big difference. And that's People remember different things, they actually don't really know what it talks about at the end of the day. So it's okay. <laughs> um, so, so that's how I managed to keep it down. Like, and I think like having, uh, as a Singaporean, having like hand signs helps you to slow down. Because then I'm like, okay, then stop talking Sarah, like wait. <laughs> and then on the next point. So I think that helped me to present things properly. And when you can interact with the crowd, you can actually see people's expression. So try to gauge like, do people understand you? Are they completely lost? Should you really just get off stage? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, these are things to think about. Yeah, that's how I help yeah. okay. I think for me, I'm also the type who doesn't prepare a script because I've, yeah, yeah, I don't prepare scripts. But what I do, usually, what I usually do is that I will prepare some, like an outline of a bullet points that might actually change as I try to create my slides. So to me, right, slides are actually very important because it, not only does it guide my flow, like gives you a cue to like speed up or slow down, and also like it's it's and then I, it also helps me to like imagine the flow of the talk because since I don't have a script, right? But how do I rehearse is that I will try to like roughly look through my slides and see the flow, like okay. So is this the flow that I would like to convey to the audience? 
is the flow like smooth such that the audience will be able to understand the story? Because I find that the story is very important. So like from the point four to creating the slides and then to actually like visualizing the flow of the presentation and then after so like so that is more for the slides but for the demo portion right like if I have a demo I will I will definitely I will want to put the I will want to put the slides like as first priority because that will be how that will be what will guide my brainstorming the flow and then like so and then like at the same time I will also work on a demo and yeah, one tip about demo, demos always fail, really. <laughs> so before, now, even if you pray to all 10 gods that Singapore <laughs> prays, it will still fail. So be prepared that it will fail and have a backup plan. Always, always have a backup plan. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, so different from the two of them, I write out every single sentence of my script. So, <clears throat> uh, so there, there are multiple reasons for this. Um, <clears throat> one, I am not very good at articulating words. It, there is a very high chance for me to black out, like, whatever. So I write everything out. And also, it is slow for me to come up with things to say on stage. But <clears throat> um, to give a conference talk, you, are very, you need to be very precise on time. So, <clears throat> so, so I can't let myself take a risk in front of so many people. So I write out all the script. Um, and then how I prepare it is, um, <clears throat> so I, I, I try not to let people feel that I'm reading out of a script. So, so how I prepare for that is I, I basically practice to myself, um, <clears throat> pretending I don't have the script, um, like um, to, to get a feel of whether I feel like I'm speaking or am I reading. So I find that helps a lot, but that also means I actually spend a lot of time in rehearsing my own, my own talk. So, but I do know that there are people who are very good at articulating words, so uh, other people can have different methods of coming up with this. Okay, just to add on, um, so I'm very similar to her. Uh, word for word, that is my that that's the way I do it, and I think uh, again. So the the point of me asking this question is sort of to to prove that there's no right way to do it, but you do have you you should try as many ways, especially if it's your first time, to see which way you feel most comfortable for. So for myself, right, I've given enough talks that I've actually honed the whole. In my mind, it's like. I mean, A, Obama has a teleprompter. If it works for Obama, it can work for me. <laughs> so, so the way I do it is that my speaker notes are ver verbatim, but so the way, I, the way I cheat to make it feel as if I'm not is I blow up the, the font size as far as big as I can get away with, and then so I'll just walk. But it's, it's, it's enough that I can, I can still see my script. Uh, so things like that. that and and when, even when I rehearse, I'm rehearsing walking, like I, I'm walking around, like walking around in my own room, I'm, I'm rehearsing as if there was an audience in front of me. But the one thing that I do, it also goes against a lot of advice, bigger advice, is that I never give my talk, I, I never give my talk in front of anybody. So I do a less test, le less, less test in production style. <laughs> uh, again, this might not be for everyone, because some people, like, you know, you want dry runs, you want to give it in front of someone to get, get feedback, and that's also, I think that, that's actually a great idea. Just doesn't work for me. So, yeah, I, so the, the point I'm trying to make is that there's no one right way, but try as many as you can, and, and I think you'll settle on uh, one that makes it comfortable. Of course, it would be nice if you could do it in a meetup because it's a more low stress environment. But you can also do a like oh straight away go conference stage. Also can <laughs> can you do you? Everything is great. I did both by the way. Can I also just say like um yeah. because it's your first time right? If you're not super sure on what your preparation style is, I actually prepared twice for my talk that happened. So I did one one month before, but then when I revisited it few weeks later, it completely changed again. This is even before I changed it on site. Uh, but <laughs> the point is that, that yeah, give yourself some time because it will sink into your brain and then you will re look at it, be able to relook at it one more time with fresh eyes, especially your first time. Mm -hmm. yeah.
I also have an add-on about dry running because I, um, the podium that we're running inside our company, we because most of our speakers are first-time speakers when they start speaking at our podium, so we do dry runs for people. Um, but the point is not to have people. Uh, at least how I see it, like the main point is not to have people to give you feedback, but for you to actually run this by yourself. So it's more for you to practice um, than for like, other people to provide suggestions. Um, <coughs> and what happens most of the time is that the speaker himself um, will have a feeling how, how the talk runs after the dry run. And most of the time also the, the suggestions goes in a way that everybody agrees that this is something that can be, um, that may be improved. So, so that is why um, um, even if you do not do a dry run with other people, I, I do believe that a lot of people <coughs> do the pre preparation by mm. themselves because you have to like, run this by yourself to get a feeling. I think another, another thing I can add on, I would like to add on about this whole dry run experience is that okay, for my first conference talk, right, I, I actually delivered a portion of my talk at the Python user group because because number one, like that, like I I had to find a place to practice my talk, and number two, I also need to get relevant feedback about my talk because like if I give it if I give a talk to like an audience who doesn't really understand then the topic, then how am I going to get the relevant feedback to improve my talk? So that's, and then that actually helped a lot in like restructuring my slides like a few, like, like, like a few days, like, I mean, like just a few days before the conference itself, because like maybe I could have prepared the slides like way beforehand, but then when I get the feedback the, and it's relevant feedback, then I, then I will tweak it. So like one, that's one thing that's good and, the, if, and then the response was very good. Then another thing that I find is that if it's too late for you to find a dry run, uh, which was what happened for my second conference, then like you, then it's probably good to sort of rehearse yourself. In the like, it can be in your mind, in your it can be like in the toilet. I don't know, but you know, like as long as you can, as long as you can rehearse the flow and how it is going to be like on stage, and then you visualize yourself on stage, then. That will be considered like a driver for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the I think the commonality amongst all of it, you have to at least give the actual talk that you're gonna give that day at least once or twice before you go on stage. Uh, some people are good with just doing it once. Personally, I, before I go on stage, I would have done the talk by myself at least twenty times minimum. Um, but that's just that, that that's 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 me. I I, I know that this is a bit overkill. Uh, just like. I'm weird. Um, uh, yeah, so but at least once, at least once, just for the flow. Because if you wing it on that day, it's different from a meetup. Like, meetup, I don't, meetup, I just go, I think some of you who have attended my meetup, you know that I go on and like, anyhow, whatever. <laughs> um, but I, 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 I feel that it's very different for a conference because in my mind, like, these people are not only paying to see me, I'm asking, I don't know, 300, 400, 500 people, I'm asking all of them to give me half an hour of their time. Time, which is something that is the only thing in life that you can never get back. Money you can earn back, you know, things you can get back. Time, if I ask you to give me half an hour of your time, just like all of you are giving me half of your day to day, right? I better give you back something in return because you are, I'm asking you for something very valuable. This is just only my personal opinion. That's why for conferences, I take it a lot more seriously. Uh, yeah, that's, that's just that. Um, but I want to bring back to the very first thing that Sarah mentioned because all of us here, we are not Angmo. Let's just put it out there. Mm. Accents. Uh, I think this is this is particularly relevant to me uh, because I do adopt an accent when I go on an international stage. In Singapore, I keep it English, but when I go up, I do the. I do the excellent thing. So you mentioned it. So <coughs> just your yeah. thoughts on it. Um, so I, I think there's a difference between um, changing your normal way of speaking to a level that people can understand, but retaining your local like, identity. There's a difference with, with that kind of scenario, and there's a difference between me just completely speaking like I was born in the US. 
And in order to like, for different intents sometimes, because sometimes you are just surrounded by so many people like that, that you also want to sound the same. Um, sometimes you might perceive it as, oh, this is because I've seen this so much on media and TV, this is therefore the gold standard for how I should sound to sound professional. And if I'm using, <clears throat> and this is what I struggle with, because um, that implies also that speaking the normal way I speak is not the gold standard and I don't sound professional, which is not true. And that would deny like a large part of Southeast Asia, right? And all the other cultures that we come from. So when I go there, I try to find a middle ground. Um, I would say I remove all the las and les and blah, blah, blah. Um, <coughs> Hokkien was all taken out. Um, <laughs> but I do retain like speaking like that. Like think of it as, um, for those of you who didn't grow up in Singapore, we have an exam, like oral examination. Uh, what I would do to pass the exam. <laughs> that kind of answer. <laughs> yeah. So it's still grammatically correct, but I tried to remind myself not to sound like I was born in the US because I really wasn't. Um, and also want to be able to introduce that, that variety of um, accent that people then come talk to me and be like, oh, okay, so where are you from? Rather than, because initially when I was starting to speak, I was so used to speaking in a US accent that everyone thought that, oh, I just thought you came from San Fran. And I was like, oh, I actually really know. So, um, and I didn't want to deny my background, so I started speaking more like that. Yeah, so that, that's my take on it. Do you all have any thoughts on it? Okay. Mm. The thing about like the local like, identity and stuff, right? So then it's a bit of like like when I go to a national conference, so and then I do see like Asians and stuff like that. But I don't see anyone like me like coming from Southeast Asia. And I think maybe people don't even know where I come from until I introduce it in my talk. That's why like and plus I'm all, and I talk I like Singaporean. And I want to do is that I talk very fast, like a lot of Singaporeans. So, like, that's why, right, when I creep, so, like, to be able to express my local identity, but also as have a level of clarity that people understand, right, that's why, like, I try to structure my slides in a way such that I will speak a little bit slower because I want to have the flow that I intended to. And then on the other hand, right, I also make a conscious effort not to say, like not to talk a lot of Singlish and stuff, but still, but still don't ref go back to the US accent, like, because, because when I, because when I went out, I changed the US and then, it's just sort of try to adopt an accent or something like that, but then at a conference stage, right, and then you know that you're probably like the only person on stage like who are like you, so you don't want to blend in so much with the crowd such that people don't know where you are from. But because at least right, when you go on stage, then you have 30 minutes of your time. You want people to know who you are, where you come from, what's your background, what can you bring to the, what can you bring to the community and the conference. And you, that's, that's why you, like, your identity as, like, from, as someone from Southeast Asia, you don't want to dilute that when you have the platform to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. A uh, relevant, relevant point, but not directly about accent. So I had an ex interesting experience about my talk. So I give the talk in China. I am originally from China also. And so <coughs> I actually had the option to either do it in Chinese or in English. So I was, I was debating myself whether I, I, I really want to do it in Chinese or English. It's a bit risky um, <clears throat> to do it in English because, for one, um, if you know about like um, people in China are like if, if they know you um, <clears throat> as a Chinese and then you go out and then you come back, kind of have a narrow mm -hmm. like <clears throat> um, kind a kind of expectation you might or might not want to 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 be added on yourself, and but uh, more importantly. Um <clears throat> I was debating because I'm not sure whether to deliver this in English. Uh, are people gonna be able to follow 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 my talk the way I want it? But <clears throat> I eventually, I decided to give it in English because I wanted the content to be consumable by by other people if they see the uh, the video. Um, <clears throat> so I did it in a way that I speak very very slowly. Um, <clears throat> I speak with, I myself speak with an accent that I pick up from all over the places I've been. 
Um, <clears throat> so eventually, what's kind of was a bit funny is that people were not able to tell that I'm originally from China, and I forgot to introduce that part uh, in my talk. <laughs> so, yeah, so <clears throat> so 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 the so that took away the pressure, but um, <clears throat> but to speak in so um, I guess the thing I learned from this experience is that um, I really had to um, <clears throat> think a lot about how to make my content digestible by the audience I'm speaking to, and if I can do anything to make it consumable by a bigger audience, uh, try to make the effort. So I think that's very worth of um, <coughs> the time as a speaker. Yeah, so I think, again, this is a very open-ended, like there's no right way or, or wrong way of doing it. And, and I, I feel that for myself, that ship has sailed uh, because uh, there, there's a lot of videos of me floating <laughs> around. Um, and if you, you see, I, I, do, I do have an accent. I have this pre very pretentious British accent uh, on stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do it all. But I have to be surrounded <laughs> by Amos. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know your face, I know. I know your face, I can only see English, uh, sorry. Um, but I think for, I think for, for me, it's, it's also funny because uh, I'm the type of person who I, I parrot very, very fast. So if I'm surrounded all by a group of like, say, <laughs> Australians. Well, wow, okay. Jiala <laughs> now is as if I was born in Kuala Land, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so I fell into that, but actually you are, you are right. Early, very, very early on, uh, when I first started speaking, right, this is one experience that I, I, I like to share a lot, is that the first time I, I was put on, on one of these events called Mozilla Developer Roadshow, where mm -hmm. It was, I felt that I was a token local. No? It was very star studded. Right? It's, it's those, if you work in front end, you might know these are like the big names. These are, these are the white guys that everyone, that sold tickets, right? Mm -hmm. Sandwiched between two very big names. Sandwiched between Smashing Magazine, Vitaly Friedman, and Jeremy Keefe. Put me in the middle, I'm like, wow, now <laughs> um, So, like, I didn't think that, that, that like, I didn't want to further emphasize that I was a token, token local. It also just so happened that I can slip into accents very fast. So I straight away, I'm more count, like, uh, I'm more count. English <laughs> accent. Uh, uh, on, 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 and, and it, it just, I'm like, like, that shit has sailed, man. I like, so I only do the local thing now. The, the only time I have a conference, com actual conference video was like, Connect Asia, I was like, I'm tired, I just got off a plane, but doing it in Spanish. So to a certain extent, I feel that, now to, to me, it depends on the audience. So like, if I'm in a Southeast Asian audience, right, I will go for it, I will go for it as a Singapore audience. But I know that if I go to especially uh, certain places in America, or even the, the, the UK where like, they genuinely really cannot hear. It's just as if a Scot Scottish person came here and gave their talk in, in really thick Scottish accent. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, that's, that's kind of tricky also. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, to a certain extent, I, I will so just like, I, I make it easier for you to understand like, if you think I'm from the West Coast, sure, no problem. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think there is a lot of value in what you said. Like, mm -hmm. what we, we, this is a problem only we have. Ang more come here, they don't think they have to speak English, what? Yeah, that's it's right. just like, uh, why, why, why do we uh, have to do this? And, and like, for, for me personally is, when I started out, yeah, I, really, I think I subconsciously, I also look down, I also look down on myself that I'm like, oh yeah, the white, of course they're here to see the white guys, they're not here to see me. Uh, it took a while, it took, when I went home to Penang and I, I did the event there, it took someone from the audience to come and say, like, actually, I, we don't know who these white people are, we came to see you. Yeah. And that, that meant a lot yeah. to me, like to go home. Because as, as an athlete, I, I used to play basketball. The thing about Malaysian athletes is that we, locals don't like us. Like we are, if we do well, they're like, oh yeah, we, government pays so much money for you, you should have do, done well. If you don't do well, like, oh, why are you so lousy? <laughs> that's the type of, that's, that's the type of environment I grew up in, and I think that inevitably also affected it. But uh, I, I'm hoping that like everyone else who, who goes on stage, like, I, I hope you don't, you, you don't have to have this type of like inferiority complex. It's like, mm -hmm. I think it, it's very, like, just be, be, be proud of who you are. And to, to be fair, on the record, I don't think the, the Western countries are doing well, very well for themselves this, recently. So I think, yeah, like, my children, like, you like, yeah, you are just as good, if not better. Yeah, I think it's just adding, like, one thing to add on to you. You also have to uh, trust that your audience 
okay, this is something I learned as well. You have to trust that your audience is also mature. Like, mm. you know, how, okay, example, when you try to um, mentor like a teenager, you cannot treat them like a kid because then they will act to you like a kid. But if you treat them like an adult, then you are expecting better behavior from them and therefore they do feed that in back to you. So one of the learnings that I had, but not through a conference talk, but more through working with very international teams is you have to trust that your audience will be more accepting of the backgrounds that you have. Because when I started speaking more um, more as a Singaporean accent or like the normal way that I speak, <clears throat> I actually got more feedback and more questions around like, oh, okay, so like, how's the, um, how's the system like? What's the education system like? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so that opens up conversation. So yeah, you also got to trust uh, that your audience will feedback and play back with you as well. Yeah. Okay, last question before we wrap up, move on is, will you continue speaking in the future? Go! Uh, I mean, yes. Go answer! Go answer my question. Yes, yeah. I must have said a reason. Just one, uh. why not? Uh, like what? What is the like what is the uh, most yeah, valuable I thing from the speaking experience <coughs> for you personally? Okay. Um. I guess just for sharing for everyone here, like, cause I also want y'all take home something that will help you moving on in your speaking career. Uh. Always think about how representation of the underrepresented is is tough enough as it is. We are already a minority. If not you, then who else? So yeah. If if you don't add to the volume, then you cannot sit there and complain that not enough people are. Yeah. So so therefore keep going. Yeah, I think. Mm, for me, I think. Well, I will be. Con yes, the answer is yes because I will be speaking at another conference. People already accepted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I think like one very important thing is that like, and when you are a developer, right, or you are like basically even if you are not a developer, you surely will have faced some problems that you know you really want to vent about in, in a way. <laughs> like of course professional venting lah, not like unprofessional <laughs> venting. <laughs> because like some because typically what you vent about may not just be your problem. Other people may have the same problem. So if you share like so it will be nice that you can share about like share about your perspective. So that you are starting a conversation about that problem. So like if you start a conversation, then people will talk more about it and then with all and then you and then maybe you will raise awareness about it and people might be and then you might be able to work something out to solve a problem together. Mm. Yeah. Well for me I can't say for the future. Uh I can say for my willingness to speak, I will definitely speak at meetups. Um, in fact, after the year of both running the podium as well as preparing for a bunch of talks, meetups um, is the stage I like the most because um, <coughs> the content is very close to where um, <coughs> where my work comes from, and I don't need to do like I don't need to make my talk <coughs> into like a full scale performance that you will probably want to <coughs> polish your talk for for a conference. Um, so <coughs> so I want to put the most of my time into polishing content for for meetup. Then if I feel like some of the talk I do is comfortable enough for me to submit for a, for a conference, I will probably do that, but I will probably not set the first goal to be speaking at the conference. And, uh, <coughs> Can I just do, do what we said, just one more point as well, because mm. just now I was speaking with Yahweh um, in the audience, they were talking about bios and stuff, but I think also it's an important point to note that speaking is not for everyone, it's totally okay. Mm -hmm. um, on the issue of representation, if you feel like speaking is not your thing, you can also do your part by being like a program manager like myself to find really good speakers and, and, and make sure that you help maintain the diversity also. So there's also value if you don't feel like you want to be a speaker. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. I think most importantly is that don't feel like just because of the level of experience you are not, in, you're not qualified to speak. Mm -hmm. and, like, it's not about the level of experience you have, it's about what you can share, like even when you are junior, that might be that might be something refreshing to the audience. Yeah. So I think at the end of the day, first of all, a uh, round of applause for my. <laughs> and yeah. I guess my takeaway is like if you never tried it before, like ju it's nice to try it once. And if it's not for you, great. You know, at least you try. Um, nobody's obliged to do anything. 
Um, so like what Sarah said, right, there are many different ways to to represent. So you can, you know, you can boost other people. You can actually, I think writing is one of the safest ways to. Mm. The only thing about writing is that, like, at, at least for me, right, uh, my personal. This is a bit off tangent already, but my personal thing is that everybody assumes I'm a guy, like, cause like Chinese name, nobody knows, like most people don't know what, they don't even know the order of my name, which is amazing, cause my parents spelled my name wrongly, but it, by default it's always he, he, like they just assume he's a guy first, unless your name is like very obvious, maybe I guess Sarah is a girl's name, then they're like, oh yeah, she. Chinese name, they're like. <laughs> yeah. Same, same here. Uh, but the the fact that it's a Chinese name that, that I think that that's also good. They're like mm, okay, mm. clearly not an Angmo. Uh, so like again, I mean, <laughs> diversity. The diversity part of this uh, global diversity CFP day is like speaking is only one platform out of many. Uh, but we do want we do hope that we can uh, change the opinion of. I I still feel that Southeast Asia like try. Even like Ch Chinese developers are still, I feel like they are they are viewed as a bit like oh, they are just a stereotype view. They're like, the South Asian is the cheap one. I, I sometimes I just feel like yeah, so yeah, 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 they probably still live on trees, so not very good. Um, <laughs> so so I think that that's the thing that like I I think it's in, in, important for us to no matter how, no matter what platform, right? Um, like share what you know, uh, just to show that like you know we also we are we we can be as good if not better than. You people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So maybe cut that out, never mind. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laugh